this people, and again, I'm going early with this one, but Elias Grev is about to be announced as a new League United player. Very good. I like this one. A little gem, I've been told. A little gem. The central midfielder is apparently undergoing a medical as I speak, so yeah, could be when you watch this, could already be a Leeds player. Fantastic. The fee is, I believe, be around £6 million. Pounds. Don't know the contract length yet. You guys, you guys will know, but let's get straight into the scout report and player profile and a bit of analysis on him. I'm excited about this one. And just real quick, real quick as well, they will be a Glenn Kamara one if that gets finged as well. So look out on the channel for a Glenn Kamara video as well and any other future signings. So here he is. is the man himself, Grev. Let's see. Let's get into scout report and see what he's about. Obviously, there's all the stuff. 23 years old, uh, plus a uh, Werder Bremen has come through their youth ranks, went through the youth ranks, then to the second team, and then played for them in, in, in the Bundesliga in the first side. Um, he's left-footed, which is something is interesting. Different dynamic when someone's left-footed. Everything's a slight, slightly different. Everything's the opposite to what you kind of expect. Main position, I put CDM, that six role. But it's interesting, I think there is a mode or a way in which he could play the eight for Leeds. Um, obviously, we play kind of with a double there. I think at Verde that they uh, they predominantly, especially this season, they played with a single pivot, meaning that was kind of one person's role and, and he didn't maybe have all the attributes for that single role. But as a double, I think he could work really well with a player because he's a very tidy footballer. So I, I'd suggest potentially there is scope there for the eight, playing a bit further forward than Ampadu in the Archie Gray role, Archie role. Definitely not a 10. People said that. Definitely not a 10 for me at all. But yeah, interesting. Valued at three million, eight caps to the national team. No real bad repeat injuries. He had an ankle injury, but that was impact. Nothing you could do about that. Yeah, let's get into it. There is career stats there, as you can see, and these are the main ones. Obviously, been in the Bundesliga and the Bundesliga two. The youth ranks for Werder Bremen. He's been there all his career. Um, really built a good little CV there when it comes to to Werder Bremen. Uh, played quite a few games in the Bundesliga without really establishing himself as a starter for a, a prolonged period of time, but been involved in a lot of games for them, especially last season. He did, he did, he did get involved in a lot of games. So it's an interesting um, dynamic. Big league as well, good league, the Bundesliga. To actually break through into a side there is, is impressive. Still 23 years old. Look at his heat map as well. As you can see on the heat map right there, uh, a very balanced midfield player. Um, and that's what we need. Now, as you can see, predominantly a lot of his main work is done in that defensive area, a bit deeper. It's the map going this way, by the way. So it's from left to right. So kind of links up and builds up that simple play deeper and then can progress forward off the ball. Or maybe if he's got space, he will drive with the ball, but not necessarily someone that's going to go 1v1 with a midfielder and take him on. You know, if he's got space to drive, he will. Um but yeah, a very balanced player. That's what stands out for me. We, look at, we looked at Amir, we looked at Amar, uh, Kamara and those guys. But this guy's map is very, very balanced on the pitch. Can go either side, can play out either way. Brilliant ball retention, which we'll, we'll get into. Um, look at his appearances and the average ratings on sofa score. Um, very solid numbers. Six six or higher is, is a solid, as a consistent, a solid number. So he comes in and he does a good job for the Verde Bremen, but can't establish yet with the players they have there and the system they play, that first team football consistently. We'll get on to his, get on to his stats. Technical, and I've, I've adapted it slightly to a CDM role, a six, because I think that's his predominant position. Although, obviously, I do believe he can be adapted into an eight, and I think we might potentially see that at times of the season. We'll see. Um, but here we are, and, and, and what's going to stand out here is that there's a high level um, at Championship for him at championship level, it's very solid throughout without really being any nines or tens. It's six, sevens, eights all across the board. It's very solid. First touch and ball control and short passing, three things that come hand in hand with him. He's got a great touch, great ball control, very calm when he passes the ball. Short passing is good. He hits it hard, hits it solid. You know, none of this behind, none of this curl pass, just hits it through, hits it hard into the man, which I love to see because it, football or not, there's nothing annoys me more when a pass ruins momentum in football. He's the type of guy who can feed the passes quick and, uh, and it, forward as well. Can a lot of his passing is kind of from middle to wide, but if, if there's a pass on forward, if, if there's a line cutting pass through the through the defenders, he will attempt to make it. And, and because of the pace of the pass he puts on, a lot of the times it will get there. But like I said, it's not his 
main, or it wasn't his main role at Werder Bremen. His role was to predominantly build the play up from the back and keep the ball ticking and keep possession and then break anything up defensively. And then if there's space to drive forward. But it'd be interesting to see how Farker adapts that into a progressive role, if that is what he plays. Very interesting indeed. The medium long passing, his medium passing is very good. Again, mostly on the ground. It doesn't really play a lot of passes high and wide. A lot of it is on the ground, you know, working the ball out wide. Ball retention is massive. Have I spelled that right? I think so. Ball retention is massive for this guy. That's one thing I really like. The Daniel Farker system is so much emphasis on ball possession. This guy's good at keeping it. There's a lot of links, there's a lot of players. A lot of people didn't like Matt Rucker, but Matt Rucker is a player who is now doing well in a possession-based system. This is the same for this guy for me. He will do well in a possession-based system. It will suit his attributes a lot more. Good technical ability. Progressive pass, I put six. Not the could be higher. Probably in this system could be slightly higher than what he's shown so far. Can do it. Has got an eye for a pass without being, you know, Pablo Hernandez type putting passes. You know, he, he can... Give a decent through ball in there. Dueling tackles and duels and all that. Yeah, he's good defensively. Good positional play defensively. There's always there seems to be in the right position to either retrieve a second ball or be in the face of the, the attacker straight away. Yeah, good defensively as well. Creativity is okay. Look, he's not he's not going to run past 10 guys. He's not going to do a crazy back heel pass. He's not going to do any of that stuff. The type of, you know, the Amiri or the Man Hernandez type player would do. He's more of a simple progressor, you know, in a lot more industrial way but a good way and it's very effective 74 out of 100 there for the score psychological no physical i can't read uh again as you can see very consistent this one's quite difficult um because you've got to understand how that will adapt and i'm trying to figure out in my mind how that will adapt to the championship but he uses his body well the way in which he can just but ever quickly be in a position or use his body to maintain the ball in in tight areas is impressive acceleration off the mark this is the first three or four meters with the ball or when going in position to receive going forward very well like he's, i wouldn't say he's very pacey per se especially with the ball you know he's the type of guy who's if if, if if he's got a straight line ahead of him with the ball and his space he will run into it he'll drive into it with power and pace but he's not someone that's going to be nippy you know he's not a, he's not got agility in the sense where he's going to be in and out of every pocket you know, he'll find a direction, he'll find space, he'll get into it, he'll give him the ball and he'll pass it back out. That's the type of player he is. So so not not like, I wouldn't say he's as quick as Archie Gray. Archie Gray, when he gets going, he's really quick. But on the ball or off the ball, if he sees a line, he will run it, best believe. And, and, and when he gets going, he can actually build up a nice bit of speed. Some late runs into the box. Will be interesting to see again the way in which Farker adapts his attributes to this system. It's one I'm actually quite interested about because it's not what I've seen more, uh, more than some of the other links so this one is very interesting decent balance again left foot and you saw by his heat map he can play either side so decent balance in there good on the swivel quick turn and ball out to make the pitch wider love all that stuff movement just expressed it good movement not someone that's going to be constantly moving every second wide he'll stay in a position he'll dominate an area of the pitch and then he might move to another one he might get the ball and drive forward with it without again not dribbling with it but just running with it space in front of him he'll 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 make, he'll make that space for sure decent fitness not consistently played so i can't give it higher than a seven but seems like a guy who, who, who could play more psychological we'll quickly go through psychological it's quite difficult to comprehend having not watched him consistently difficult moments uh, i give a six that needs to be proven more for sure very safe at Berda Bremen. and he's been up through there he's not had that move yet this will be interesting to see how he can deal with with the pressure of, of, of that promotion from Leeds United. But like I said, been at Werder Bremen through their promotion, so so he's solid in that sense. Persistence, I like his persistence when someone's not playing to constantly come on and perform at a good level. is something I like, and he showed that. Leadership, hard one to judge, not watch him too much. Does, does speak a bit, does demand a bit, does move the ball. When he moves the ball, he speaks. So it could be higher than that potentially, but not for me. I think he's just a solid young player that's learning that side of it. But Karma's reading of the game tactically and think speed of speed of thinking all at a nine because i think he excels in these i think that's what he's here for that build up progression in terms of maintaining the ball and building up the attacks from deeper again interested to see will it be with ampadu or, or is he a replacement for ampadu if ampadu's out 
think there's a way this this guy could be in the side. I do. Again, Archer Gray is a young lad, will be inconsistent at times. Does he start automatically over Archer, Archer Gray? It's interesting. I'm interested to see this. I think he's predominantly a CDM, a number six, but I do see scope in which he could be adapted to an eight for sure. Without being as progressive as, as the other eights we've been linked with, like Kamara potentially, but yeah, it's interesting to see. 56 out of 70 um, and a 42 out of 60 in those solid stats, solid. Anyone wants to read the quick preview on him? There it is. No one reads that, do they? That's, that's just for me personally. That's for my kind of scouting reports, I guess. Key strengths and improvements. Dun, dun, dun. Now, technical ability. Good at it. You watch anything on him, it, the way in which he passes a ball is brilliant. Just quick, fast, on this bobbling stuff, slow bobbling passes, just short, quick, crisp passes. Medium, short term passing is decent. Again, like I said, can be progressive with those. Wasn't really required to do that at Werder Bremen. Maybe I can unlock that from here because he, he's good with a, a ball at his feet he's good at passing it so of course you can stretch and, and experiment how far of a talent he could be with the ball at his feet and Daniel Fark is good at that finding these little gems in Germany who who he can then evolve into players that can be much better than they were performing before ball retention is excellent like I said before can turn the ball at a great level defensive work probably goes under the radar always quick to close down that's what I mean by that acceleration Again, not, not a, a rapid player that's going to be buzzing around the pitch using speed, but guy, when he sees a target or sees a direction, he will boom two or three, four metres into that space quickly. That's defending a player quickly onto him. Creative, creativity and consistency. Now, this is just down to, I think, trying to find something. He's not someone that's, for me, yet proven that he's a 10 in this or a 10 in that. Solid 7 or 8 throughout the board in terms of his attributes. Nothing that stands out has been terrible. I don't think he's an amazing dribbler with the ball in terms of getting past defenders. Like I said, he will run with it if he if the space is there. Of course he will. But not a creative in terms of that way. You know what I mean? Being in that 10 row, creating cutting edge passes, potentially not his scrum shoot. And he won't be required to play that. Consistency, I want to see a consistent performance from him now. Now he's at Leeds. I've not seen a consistent performance in terms of starting for Werder Bremen for a long time and seeing out the 90 minutes. I've not seen that yet. So that is something that he will have to improve at Leeds if he is to play a bigger role than potentially some of us might think, which I think is something we could see. But let's see. We don't know. It's the unknown. Daniel Farker knows what he's doing. We just have to guess and figure out. Similar players, there's quite a few you could, I guess, put in there. I put Gay, Adrissa Gana Gay, in the terms of the way Gay passes a ball. I love the way he's a guy who will quickly receive a pass. He knows the game around him. He can see the game around him. The pass is crisp, hard, quick. Can drive with a ball, but isn't necessarily the best athlete in terms of agility. But but on in that sense, you can see this Kamara as well is in similar in that role. Ampadu in terms of I guess defensive play, the way she covers ground, driving into tackles, not letting the guys out of his sight. Different type of passer to Ampadu, different technique. Again, slightly different player. I think Ampadu's a better athlete in terms of agility and taking guys on, but this guy's probably uh, better in terms of quick, hard passes than Ampadu in that sense. Rocker's a good one as well, Matt Rocker. Different profiles, but in terms of what they can bring to a lead side, probably similar. Be interesting to see again where this guy... I'm excited to see where this guy fits in. I really am. Technical B, physical C... Psychological, B, overall C+. Plus. Whether he's a starter or a squad player, for me, it's a good player to have in the squad. And someone who could push Arch Gray and Ampadu because he has the talent and he has the ability to do that. There's still a lot of question marks of a, will it work? What can he give to the side? What role he will play? Can he do it consistently? Those are the question marks. But there's always question marks. And now it's down to him to join us and answer those question marks. We need good depth. And, and whether it's him... Ampadu, Gray, whoever whoever's missing out from that triplet there is a great option off the bench. And realistically, the way you think about it, Ampadu's not getting dropped. He's been phenomenal for Leeds so far. Arch Gray has. So he's got a real task to get into the side. So he might have to start on the bench and really prove himself. Let's see. Let's see. There's a lot of games in the Championship. He'll get a lot of game time. And if he puts a, a, a good performances together and Daniel Farkas and Preston will play a lot of football for Leeds in either position in that midfield for me even though he has predominantly played a single pivot for Werder Bremen deeper. But let's see how he adapts. 
Let me know what you guys think. I appreciate all the support. Good one. I'm low kick excited about this one. I want, just want to see how it goes. I'm more interested to see how it happens. I'm not going to say hey, this is like mind blowing to me because I don't know a million facts about him. I've watched him a, 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 probably once or twice from my bun- when I watched the Bundesliga because I love that league. But yeah, good player, really good player. And let's see how he fits. I'm excited to see. But yeah, please leave a like. I appreciate all the support as usual in there.